And you need to ask yourself, am I ready for the great awakening? Am I ready for the great revival that we pray for? If I'm in survival mode, then we must get ready for the great war. Welcome to The Gathering Place. I'm Dr. Nigel Big Pond. It's good to be with you again. Uh, it's always an honor to be with you. Um, <clears throat> I want to just remind you that uh, we are having our June SWAT, June the 7th to the 11th. And so you have that time to contact us if you want to come to the training. And it's all about spiritual warfare, but it's not just spiritual warfare. It's how to deal with land issues. And we have excellent teachers here. These are guys that are uh, native, and not all of them are native, but there's some that are native. Uh, of course, me, I'm full-blooded Yuchi, and we have a Cherokee brother. He's full-blooded. We have OG Cree, uh, full-blooded. We have uh, a Mohawk that's full-blooded from New York. And uh, uh, Chickasaw is full blood. And so uh, what they're going to be doing is not just uh, everything scriptural by scriptural by scriptural or Bible, but not that we're negating the Bible by no means, because we believe that our, our First Nation people, uh, even though they couldn't read the Bible, they didn't have a Bible, they knew God. They had a spirit and they trusted in God and everything that they did. Everything was about God. The land was sacred, the water was sacred, the air we breathe was sacred. Everything he created was sacred. And so they knew that it didn't come from a Martian. It didn't come from a Big Bang Theory. It didn't no lizard crawl out of the ocean, uh, nothing like that. They knew that there was a creator that created all things. And and probably in those days, they probably seen things like we haven't not seen because we're so accustomed to TV and, and internet and just all kinds of things in front of us. And so it's hard for us to see things. It was probably easy for those old people, not just native people, but all people, that when they didn't have those things in front of them to they didn't have Google or anything like that to turn to for questions or answers or anything else. They just had to depend upon their prayer life, <clears throat> what they believed in God, the Creator. And uh, I believe they've probably seen a lot of things. You know, I, my, my granddaughter came up to me one day and she said, Grandpa, is there such thing as aliens? And uh, is it in the Bible? I said, well, no, it's not in the Bible, and I don't believe in aliens. I said, I think there's aliens with people that are not believers because they don't believe in angels. They don't believe in the Spirit. And so they'll probably see a lot of things. They'll probably see things up in the sky and everything, and Martians and all kinds of things. But I don't believe in aliens. I don't think uh, there's aliens that come out of Mars and is going to eat you up and all this stuff. Uh, I think it's just people believe in it because they, they, uh, they probably don't believe in angels from heaven, godly things, uh, angels that ministered to people and ministered to people. I've seen at least three angels. I, I hadn't seen a whole lot of angels, but I've seen three of my angels uh, one that saved my life, another that was giving direction to other angels in front of my bed early one morning, and then the last one I seen was here on this land was 30 foot long. Now, how did, did I measure it 30 foot? It's just like the Lord said, you have a huge angel that's 30 foot long. And I seen the shadow when I walked out of my house. It's early in the morning, the eastern sky, eastern sun, shined upon that angel and it sent a shadow right there and it looked funny. So I looked up to see if it was a cloud 
And here it was an angel with his hand sticking out, his arms like this, and looking down at me. I couldn't actually see the face. But God says, you have a 30-foot angel. And so I just accept that. I believe in angels. I believe there's angels. I don't believe in aliens. I don't think it was a 30-foot alien. I think it was a 30-foot angel. The more you do for the Lord, the bigger your angels will be, I believe. I think uh, the more people do for God, he's going to protect you and guide you. So anyway, uh, I want you to just uh, mark that down, June 7th to the 11th. You can go to 2-Rivers, num the number 2-Rivers.com for the website. Or you can call us at 918-366-6735. And so um, uh, it's all biblical. Uh, I want to make that plain. I'm not saying we're just pulling from our mindset and all this, just the past. But you're, there is a past, you know. What kept the First Nation people from being eliminated? You had the Trail of Tears, the Trail of Death, all kinds of things were happened to us to, to for bloodshed and to destroy. But God seen us fit. God seen us fit to keep us alive and keep us in this nation. Now, granted, there's not that many like there was, there, there was said to be probably maybe 18 million at one time. Now there's probably 6 million. Um, and so <clears throat> uh, anyway, I just need to, to allude to that just a little bit. We're talking about today, uh, Esther, in uh, for such a time as this, and uh, how Mordecai and Cersei had a lot to do with Cersei the king, had a lot to do with uh, Esther and the kind of uh, uh, kind of woman Esther was. She was a trem tremendous warrior, a woman warrior, actually. Before I get into that, I want to release something good to the Mike the, Mike the Fight book. It's page uh, 65 called Friendly Warriors. And uh, I don't know about you, I need, I need this book every day because there's something happens something people say to you, try to hurt you, hurt your feelings or whatever, or make you feel bad, or uh, you see things on the news that bother you. Well, I turn to this book, and this book always helps me. Friendly Warriors, page 65. They create a strong covenant unable to break. Friendly Warriors do. Friendly Warriors, they watch over the, their friends like a brother or sister. Their love for one another grows strong in battle. Their love for one another grows strong in battle. Their godly loved one overcomes the enemy. So be mighty, friendly warriors. People need you, and they really do, especially today. Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So I thought that was good. Good, a good statement today. We're going to start where we left off, if you don't mind, um, so we can finish this teaching. Uh, we, we was talking about, for such a time as this, as this moment, and how Esther followed God's direction, patiently waiting for the right moment. God opened the king's heart to her, which resulted in favor. And when we wake up each day for such a time as this, it is right now, right here. Just like you woke up this morning, right now, right here. For a right now moment and a right here moment. And so we can, we can trust the King of Kings to guide us as we say yes in obedience. Yes and amen. When we, when we do, we will discover that even in the midst of our hardship and everything in between, God has a plan. God has a plan. We can trust him as we live out our for such a time as this. We can trust him. 
in every moment, each day, right where we are, as we live out our for such a time as this. In every moment of each day, right where we are, we can trust him. Now, we have hope in God. Our hope that this will help you better. My hope is that it, this teaching will help you better to give you understanding, the meaning of purpose in God, have a better relationship in God. In his word, he says, know that I'm God. Pray without ceasing. He says, fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. All things work together for good. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. God will remind us. Esther, for living large and embracing royalty over righteousness. Herself over service. Mordecai told her she had been chosen to set her own interests aside, let go of her own ambitions, and face an enemy full on. She was to risk her life and her legacy legacy, with no guarantees of a positive outcome. That's the, for such a time as this. And Mordecai challenged Esther to accept this challenge. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this, Esther 4.13. And so there's the challenge for such a time as this. God has given each of us a job, position, resources, education, and more. God has opened opportunities to his kingdom purpose. He placed us wherever we are because we are in the midst of a battle, a war. You and I are in the midst of a conflict involving a good but an evil battle as well. An evil battle. True for today, Isaiah 33, 6 says, And we will be the stability of your times, a wealth and salvation, wisdom and knowledge, the fear of the Lord, in is his treasure. Proverbs says, The Lord has made everything for its own purpose. So this is so key to understand those words today. To miss a kingdom and assignment, because we become too caught up in. Our personal kingdom is one of the greatest tragedies we could ever face. An entire nation was grateful for how Esther responded to Mordecai's rebuke. Their lives were spared. How many souls can be spared in the culture where we live today? How many souls can be spared in the culture we live today? Well, I think they all can be spared. It's up to us to have faith and pray to God. You know, Jesus, all his teaching was about prayer and faith. And now we have a dilemma in the, our country, and people are afraid. They live in fear. They have no faith. And unfortunately, some believers are the same way. They just don't have the faith that they thought they had because their faith is being tested right now. But, but we need to pray that they will keep the faith, not, not belittling anybody, because we all have those times when we're just faithless. But I'm telling you, we need to really initiate our faith in this season. When we choose to step up to a service, even if it involves sacrifice, we have to keep the faith. Now, the question bears to be asked, we have to reflect on, respond to, is what are some of the ways the Lord is asking you to sacrifice on behalf of his purpose for serving others? Question two, what step do you, can you take to move more fully in his calling of surrender to him on behalf of his greater plan? 
What's one step you can take to move more fully into his calling of surrender to him on behalf of his greater plan? What are some ways that the Lord is asking you to sacrifice on behalf of his purpose and serving others? Now, I would like to release this prayer to you, if I may. It's a kingdom prayer for such a time as this. Lord, turn my heart and my mind toward you and toward the role you have chosen for me to live out. Lord, help me to put your will and your purpose ahead of my own. I humbly bow before you and ask for your direction and guidance, as well as your courage to live out the calling I've been given for such a time as this. Lord, don't let me miss my kingdom assignment. Lord, don't let me be caught up in my personal kingdom. Lord, let his nation be grateful for their lives. That they were spared and spared in this culture. And Lord, let me live today. Let us choose to step up to service, even if it involves sacrifice. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. In Jesus' name, amen. I just felt like the need to to release that prayer to you for such a time as this. Because we really need to take our royal position in this day and time. Remember those six words are very important. For such a time as this. You have for such a time as this. You have one of those times. And you have to look up to that. You have to acknowledge that and understand that. You have to know God's will. You have to have courage and hope in God as a believer in Christ. You've got to realize for such a time as this shows God's providence. He works all things together to together, fulfill his purpose in you and through you. Don't ever hesitate to move forward in his strength. Now, we went over this before, but let me go over it again. We need to be to reach deeper and deeper into Esther's life. That hidden things that's hidden in us that maybe we don't know about. The characteristics of Esther. Or she was very highly intelligent, very manip manipulative too, and superficially charming when needed to be. Was able to induce fear. We need to be that way too. We need to not live in fear, but able to induce fear into the enemy. To, to let them know, let the enemy know, you better leave me alone. Because I'm a child of God. It's, it's all about trusting God, people. Right where you are. Right where you are. Remember, he, he formed you before he, in your mother's womb. He knows you before you've even born. For we are God's masterpiece in Ephesians 2.10. Just think about that. Let's just go back over that just a little bit. You are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he plans for us long ago. He planned for Nigel Big Pond to do great and mighty things. Long ago, I was to do, to be going to Washington, D.C. and uh, work on a resolution of apology to the First Nation people. Long ago, I was to start a church before I even knew it. Know it. Long ago, I was to be a part of Two Rivers Native American Training Center. 
Long ago, ago, I was to be a part and develop All Tribes D.C. and take a group of 27 tribes to D.C. to pray at the Washington Monument and to release a, a prayer of forgiveness to a nation that never asked for forgiveness long ago. Long ago, I, I was ordained to marry my wife, Jan. Long ago, I was ordained to have three children and six grandchildren, long ago. And I have to raise them into the, uh, in the Lord, to raise them up in the Lord. And so, for you are created by and knit it together for such a time as this. You're fearfully and wonderfully made for such a time as this. You are, and your works are going to be wonderful. That is good news. Um, you were made in a secret place. That's the reason you need, I tell everybody, you need to find your sacred place for your secret place where you can pray and believe in God so you can just have that trust not only in God but yourself that you know, that you know God trusts you God has a purpose for each and of our lives it's easy to get down It really is. It's easy to feel sad and feel down and out and get out of sort. But remember, God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And it can be fulfilled. God's going to disagree with you that you can't do it. I can't do that, Lord. God's going to disagree with you immediately. He's going to disagree with you immediately. We've got to realize that our assurance is in God. Our encouragement is in God. Our journey is through God. We can't do things based out of lack of courage. We do it because we have courage. We have reassurance. We will all face times of fear. Or doubt. It's times when we wonder, why me, Lord? For such a time as this. That works all things together. And so we got to realize that we're, we're in a time that we must take heart, not lose heart that we do the will of the Father, that we do the will of the Father. Communicate with Him. Take your royal place in this kingdom of God. Even I would uh, submit to you that maybe you need to take a three-day fast. could be on water. It could be Certain foods, maybe greasy foods. I'm not going to eat for three days greasy foods. I'm not going to drink uh, soda pop for three days. I'm not going to drink sweets for three days. I'm not going to eat a desserts for three days. It could be any type of fast. I'm not going to listen to bad things for three days. I'm just going to listen to encouraging things for three days. So it can be any kind of fast. It's something that you can do for the Lord. Remember, not doing it for me. You're doing it for God and God alone. God is a tremendous God. He really is. And I think he deserves us fasting for him and fasting for the needs that we have. Maybe you need healing in your body. Maybe you need a financial blessing. Maybe you need a job. Maybe you need some legal things that are happening in your life. 
and maybe need some uh, special favor in that. So there's many things. Maybe your your family's not getting along like they should. Maybe you need to do a fast so your family can start getting along better. Uh, there's so much that we can uh, do and, and have understanding with. Uh, we can all do it. Uh, I don't know what your needs are. You do. And so maybe you should just get just pray and, and fast for three days. For three days. There's surely there's something that you can do for three days. You say, well, I can't do without this certain food or whatever, because maybe your body or whatever, I don't know. <clears throat> but there's some things that you can do. There's things that you can leave alone, like pop, uh, candy, sweets, all kinds of things that you can that you can just leave alone for three days. Just let it go. Don't, don't, don't bother it for three days. Don't get upset for three days. Um, just have joy and peace because there's always going to be something come at you. You're going to have the opportunity to get upset about it, let it bother you all day, and you just say, no, I refuse to do that. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this continue to harbor and harbor on me. And so, uh, anyway, um, I think this is good teaching for you in this day and time for such a time as this. Really, it's, it's priceless. It really is. It's really priceless to do things for the Lord. Take that position for such a time as this, that royal position. Let royalty, that royal position, be yours. And understand that royal position. It's very important. Very, very important, that royal position that God has for us and that God will use us in. We just praise God for all that he's doing, all that's being, all that his purpose will have to be. We thank you, Lord, for being with us. I thank each and every one that's watching this program today will be blessed and sanctified for such a time as this. In Yeshua's name, amen. Atohi.